and a story about uh, how cloud computing has changed the way we look at simulation. So before I begin, I'd like to introduce you to the CATI simulation team. Uh, we were formerly K-Lynx, uh, then merged with CATI to kick off 2021. We have 16 simulation engineers in the US. We've been simulia experts since 2005, and we cover a wide, a wide variety of different industries. We, uh, we do offer a, a, a wide range of simulation consulting services, um, from impact to CFD to optimization and correlation. And again, we do cover a, a quite a wide range of different industries. So very exciting work we get to work on every day. So in 2021, uh, we were really projecting a lot of services growth and we started to ask ourselves the following questions. Uh, uh, how do we provide fast lead times with increased project volume? And how do we increase our productivity without increasing our licensing or hardware costs? And Going into that, uh, those two questions, we we had to really take a take stock of what our current workflow uh, was looking like. So this is a uh, this is a, a picture of our actual server room, um, and as you can see, uh, we have uh, we have a big 80 CPU cluster that's seven years old. We have uh, three 16 CPU towers that are three to six years old. Um, we have some AC units to keep our, our machines running cool. Um, and uh, we, you know, we have some old data storage solutions as well. So with this setup, we, we had a lot of concerns. And this might look like some of the, the server rooms that you might be working in. And uh, you know, these concerns were, are we getting the most bang for our buck uh, for our, uh, with our hardware in terms of performance? Um, there's associated maintenance costs of money and time of upkeeping them and frustrating things like an old uh, clusters OS version no longer being supported um, to not get the latest be able to use the latest versions of Abacus. Um, we've had co constant overheating protection failures um, why we have the AC units power loss to the building data loss of drives uh, failing and also bottlenecks during high demand and and uh, this is what this picture in the right hand side is depicting is that um, uh, kind of describing Murphy's law when anything uh, kind of can go wrong it does and it always seems that when I have a big job due there's always a long line of people also trying to get their jobs done as well so we needed to do better and uh, our proposed solution was to give uh, you know give the cloud uh, a shot um, and we we we're really interested in keeping our same local pre, -pro pre and post processing. Um, and uh, with that cloud solution, we theoretically would not be spending any more time or energy wasted on hardware concerns. So before I dive into how it ended up working out for us, I wanna show you, give you a, just a brief de depiction of what the current licensing options look like. So on the, le on the left, we have our traditional token licensing scheme which is a non-linear core to token relationship. And you're, uh, you're, you're gonna need a certain number of CPUs to solve with a certain number of uh, cores or CPUs. And uh, the most cost-effective way to utilize this is to run these 24 seven. And how this works for us is we can run one machine solving one job at a time. So for cloud credits, um, it's it's a little bit different. It's a credit per hour consumption, and uh, there's you're, you just consume the credits as you use them, and you have unlimited parallel solving capability. So you can you can run as many jobs as you want at the same time. So how this looks like for bottleneck management is that uh, traditional token. This this graph depicts traditional token based licensing. So with this. Uh, with this line being the uh, kind of the, the the limit of capacity, at all these points in time, we are essentially going to be experiencing bottlenecks. In all of these times, we're going to be uh, not utilizing our investment. So what ends up happening is stuff just ends up taking longer to uh, to solve when you're using token-based licensing. So. Um, so as as we uh, had that proposed solution, we decided to trial the cloud for three months. And over the course of those three months, we had 22 projects where we ran 150 jobs, five hours on average. And in those 12 uh, 
though in those three months there were 12 days where we avoided bottlenecks um, and all of our projects were delivered on time so you can see um, with this red line depicting our local hardware capacity there was quite a few days where we would we would not have been able to um, actually deliver um, at the cadence that we were hoping to for our customers so the, the cloud really came through in this in this particular scenario on top of that uh, just one case study of uh, of looking at analysis that we've done um, we have this uh, this model where it, it ends up requiring four crash scenarios to properly evaluate it and on our uh, local cluster with 80 CPUs, that takes 20 hours per job to run. So on the cloud, all four models solve simultaneously with 144 CPUs in a total of 12 hours. So we went from 80 to 12 hours using the cloud for this particular project. So again, huge advantages being able to utilize that parallel processing. And on top of that, you using the credit licensing scheme, you get incentivized for solving faster. So using a credit per hour licensing scheme, uh, you, you end up not only solving faster um, with a higher number of CPUs, it ends up costing less. So to get 144 CPUs on a local token-based installation, you're, you, it is a, truly a huge cost uh, to get that amount of licensing. Whereas using credit-based licensing schemes, you actually are, you know, for this credit cost, you are uh, half the cost of an 18 and 36 core configuration in a fraction of the time as well. So it's really democratizing simulation and making high high-end computing accessible um, uh, at all levels of your simulation installation size. So on top of uh, looking at all those benefits for performance, um, the other aspect that uh, has been really important to us was we didn't want to uh, really disrupt our workflow too much. You know, traditionally we're using uh, Abacus CAE and HyperMesh tools. Um, so we're, we, they have constructed this tool in such a way where we can continue working in those, uh, those pre-processors and then exporting our Abacus input deck and loading it onto the web via the web UI. Um, there is a, an additional option where you can work entirely on the cloud using the th uh, 3D Experiences uh, um, new FEA pre and post processor, um, which also uh, is does have a lot of great benefits as well, um, increasing productivity, um, automating a lot of the modeling processes. Another aspect moving to this uh, credit licensing scheme is that you get real-time costs for simulation usage. So traditional shared licensing is rather difficult to budget across um, multiple projects and departments. Um, if it is like in a, a shared uh, uh, license server, so this this gives there's a lot of metrics involved um, that let you get very uh, highly detailed data on how your how your credit licenses were consumed whether it be via the department or via project so um, you know you you really will know exactly how much your spend is um, for every simulation task that that you uh, end up doing so really nice to have that very granular data So um, what's next uh, for this, which we're really excited about, is the unified licensing model. So the, uh, the unified licensing model named the SIM unit licensing is uh, going to make all of the different physics solvers available uh, via a single uh, credit or token-based licensing scheme. So that, that encompasses your structures, electromagnetics, fluids, multi-body dynamics, fiber acoustics, all of these are going to be comp uh, compatible with the SIM unit licensing. So um, with one pool of credits or tokens and the, pr the proper GUI, you're able to maximize that investment um, across all those different domains. Very exciting. So to, to summarize um, what we've kind of talked about today, we had a very successful Q1 evaluation of the cloud. and. Uh, Going forward, we were, you know, we're fully transitioning to the cloud for Q2, and ultimately projects are getting done faster, and we're taking on more work simultaneously, and we're very excited to use the SIM unit licensing to utilize other physics solvers in the future. 
So we are very excited about the cloud. And you know, feel free to reach out to myself or our sales at CATI.com to find out the latest promotions and, and uh, understand, uh, to get more information on how you can uh, see how this tool can work for you. So again, I wanna thank you for your time today. Uh, we really do appreciate being uh, able to empower you, the innovators. So we, if you have any questions, please uh, let us know and have a great rest of your day.